Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So today's video is going to be a quick one covering uh, the new Cura release, which is 5.1. Uh, typically, I release this video back when it's in beta, uh, but it's been out for a little while now, which I know. Uh, just been a little bit behind, but I should be back on a normal cadence here shortly. Uh, I am now in my temporary working area, <laughs> so um, I don't have everything set up that I need, but I do have my printer set up in a different room. So you'll see a couple different areas on the videos for that. Uh, we'll be moving again in October hopefully uh, when we close on the house that we're buying so before we get into what's new with cura I just wanted to say that I should have my updated profiles out later this week, um, but if you wanted to, you could use the Cura 5.0 once it gets started with. Uh, I haven't noticed much of a change. And that I'm working on getting some firmware updates out on the website as well. Uh, I'm gonna be adding the SKR Mini E3 V3 firmware, along with some Marlin 2.1 uh, builds as well. I'm gonna focus on the ones that have been more popular, get those out first, and then start to uh, build out the rest. But if there's anything specific you're looking for, uh, please let me know. By leaving a comment below or joining us on discord all right so let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and get started all right guys so we're here at the computer the first thing we got to go ahead and do is download the new version of cura uh, so we'll go to cura's download page um, typically when i'm recording this video it's still out in beta so you would see beta uh, down here and then you would go into that and download it from the github page which i've shown you guys before um, but because this is actually released at this point uh, we'll just go to download for free and then choose your operating system. In this case, I'm running uh, Windows 10. So I'm just gonna click on that and download it. And then once that's downloaded, I'll go ahead and run through the install really quick. All right, so that finished, I'm gonna go ahead and launch it. Also, before we run through the install, I just wanted to reiterate that um, I'm gonna try to get the Cura profiles available for you guys to download this week. And then I'm also gonna try to get uh, some of the uh, SKR Mini E3 V3 firmware builds available on my website, along with some of the Marlin uh, 2.1 builds as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and hit next here. You're just gonna run through this as a default install pretty much. So next, agree. Next, install, and it's gonna run through the install. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and hit finish and launch it. All right, if you had previous versions of Cura installed, it will import your uh, printers and everything that you had set up. Uh, if you didn't, I have a video covering just the base setup for a lot of the Creality printers. Uh, you can follow that guide. Um, but let's go ahead and go into what's new here. So I'm just going to open that up really quick. And typically it would have launched that to begin with, but I did have this installed before. I went ahead and uninstalled it before the video. So there's uh, some little things like that that it doesn't do. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, some of the changes are tied to Ultimaker printers. Uh, I know a lot of my audience here are just DIYers and have the Creality printers or other printers that are easy to mod and not necessarily the expensive uh, Ultimaker or some of the other higher end printers. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I'm just going to focus in on the changes that are more towards the uh, open source side of things. All right, so this one specifically is um, for Ultimaker. It is starting to allow some of the metal printing, um, but I'm just gonna move past that. Uh, same with this resolution enhancements. If you're on a specific version of their printer and firmware, you'll get better resolution out of it, uh, which is great. Uh, just like I mentioned, a lot of you guys just aren't using these printers. All right, so moving on here. Uh, this one's a little bit interesting. So it's supposed to have enhancements around supports if you're using uh, some of their filament and breakaway materials. Uh, when I was just going through and looking at the basic support settings, nothing really changed there. Uh, so maybe those only unlock if you're using that material. And if that's the case, that's tying it specifically back to their printer line. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail there. Did wanna point out that I ran multiple tests here and the changes between uh, 5.0 and 5.1 uh, for supports are very minimal, at least if you're using a Creality printer. That said, if you are using one of their printers, um, the breakaway material does seem uh, really neat. It's a pretty cool concept. And if you are able to get that increase of speed of 20%, uh, that would be pretty substantial as well. Here's just a couple changes that they added around visualization and the slicing process. Uh, it didn't really change anything for me, um, at least not on day-to-day -day usage. 
and then this just goes into project files um, if you guys are interested I might do a video kind of covering the project files in a bit more detail in the future it's kind of like a bundle of the different materials and stuff you might be using together uh, I just don't know how valuable it is to the common uh, 3d printer hobbyists so I was questioning it and then next here is where it kind of goes over the full list of changes um, the ones I wanted to point out here are the improvements to the algorithm uh, just get you a cleaner print overall and makes it a little bit less uh, demanding on your printer and computer um, the addition of an experimental setting around uh, alternating wall direction uh, it's supposed to help with warping I'll show you where that's at if you wanted to enable it and then enhancements to uh, the combing settings it's not really something that you're able to see in the UI it's more of a back-end thing and then if you're using acceleration or jerk which I typically have enabled on my profiles you can disable them specifically for uh, travel moves and it's supposed to just help reduce buffer errors that kind of stuff and uh, I think also reduce slicing time but I haven't really seen that much of a difference there uh, maybe it depends on the type of computer you're running and then they had a bunch of other just bug fixes as well uh, which is always good to see uh, just means that the software is uh, really has a good community behind it people reporting bugs and that they're investing to fix the bugs all right so let's go ahead and load a couple things I wanted to show you where some of the settings were all right, so I went ahead and loaded a rock bridge into Cura 5.1 and 5.0 that we can use for examples here. Um, I did something a little bit larger like this so you can kind of see the support uh, uh, structure. Uh, but going down and just enabling supports here, and then I'm going to slice it really quick. Uh, actually, I already had it enabled on this one, and it is enabled here as well, so I'm going to slice that. Um, also wanted to point out that I am using dynamic quality on both of these so the results would be consistent I don't like to use my profiles when I'm just doing an overview like this because that could be a variance from default settings or well, it is a variance from default settings and that could kind of skew some of the examples I'm going over uh, so that's why I stick with their default settings or one of their default profiles there once this is done slicing I wanted to point out a couple things really quick Alright, so the first thing here, I've got the same profile enabled between the two. Here's Cura 5.0. Um, it has an estimated print time of 1 day, 16 hours, 58 minutes. And with 5.1, it's 1 day, 18 hours, and 38 minutes. So it does increase the print time by a decent bit. I'm assuming uh, that has to do with some of the changes they made to the actual slicing engine itself. Um, but it does have a noticeable impact on the estimated print times. All right, now going into preview, like I was mentioning with supports here, they're pretty much identical. The same settings are there out of the box. So going over to preview again here. There are no noticeable differences between um, the configuration options or the actual preview here, at least with the printing profiles that I'm using. Like I said, that might be different if you're using one of the Ultimaker profiles. All right, next I wanted to show you the wall direction setting. Like I said, it is under experimental. So here if you search on 5.0, you're not going to see it. Um, but if you go under 5.1, you can enable it. Uh, I already enabled it for this example here. But this kind of talks about what it is really quick. And um, you're not going to really notice a difference in the preview or anything like that because this isn't showing um, how everything is being drawn out at the preview shows what each layer looks like uh, so it will look the same but just know it is kind of alternating the layers there the direction between the layers and that uh, it's supposed to help with warping so if you are having some issues with warping that might be a setting that's worth trying out and then the last thing i wanted to kind of show you really quick is under acceleration and or jerk so if you enable jerk control you're going to have enable travel jerk it's enabled by default because that's the typical settings like in a previous version like if we go over to 5.0 you're not even going to see it so that option is just not even there and what it's supposed to do is reduce buffer and along with some other issues um, just because it's not accounting for the additional overhead while just doing a travel in theory it sounds good i don't know how much it'll actually help um, but i guess that's something that i'll be testing and messing around with over time 
but just know the option is there for both jerk and acceleration uh, by default if you enable either one of them it's going to enable it for travel control as well um, but you always have the option to disable it there and then like I mentioned, they also made an enhancement around combing. There are no settings or anything in the menu that have changed. It's really just more of a back-end engine thing, I believe. But if you're using combing, it is supposed to help out a little bit. Some of the stuff is very subjective when trying to uh, articulate like how much of an improvement it's going to make for your print. Uh, because the answer really is going to be, it's going to vary in most cases. I mean, it could vary between printers, between uh, different things you're printing. It's just more options to add to your tool belt. Um, that's the way I look at it, at least. All right, so I'm going to get my profiles updated to my website, uh, hopefully this week. And if you guys have any questions about anything I covered or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join me on Discord. Thanks. All right, guys, so that covers the Cura 5.1 release. It really appears to be more of a bug fix release. They have a lot of bug fixes, a couple enhancements to the engine, along with a couple small features that have been added and as more experimental and kind of behind the scenes. So it's nice to see the release. Uh, it's good that they have constant bug fixes, uh, but if you're looking for a lot of new shiny things, uh, this isn't going to be that release, uh, which doesn't surprise me because uh, Cura 5.0 was a significant change. So it makes sense that they'd have a couple follow-up releases is kind of uh, fixing any issues that came up with the major release there. If you have any questions about what I covered or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.